I'm kind of curious, Coach, were there any players, because, again, we think of, like you said, it was the players. I mean, you think of some of the legends that came through during that time, but were there any guys specifically that you remember? Because, again, like you said, your role as a strength coach is to kind of push a kid to the next level and get more out of him than he thought he – was there any guys that maybe fans would know of during that time at South Carolina that maybe when they got there were, you know, they were they were a big-time player or they thought they were a big-time player, but you guys were able to – you know, whether it be through the strength program, because I think, again, that's where it all starts. You guys were able to push them sort of that next level and, again, bring even more out of them than maybe they thought they had. Yeah, there was a lot. I mean, I mean, here, I'll give you I'll give you a top end example. You know, when when Jadavian Clowney got there, I think he was 245 pounds. Mm -hmm. And when he left three years later, he was 276 pounds. Mm -hmm. When he was 245, he ran a 446 40 and had a 41 inch vertical. And when he was 276, he ran a 446 40 and had a 41 inch vertical. Um, so there's there's some improvement uh, to an already freakish athlete. Yeah. Um, Melvin Ingram was another one that, you know, he actually lost some weight uh, and, and, and improved his his endurance and conditioning over the course of his career. I mean. There's so many Cliff Matthews, Devin Taylor putting on weight, um, you know, even even Marcus and, and Brandon Wilds and Mike Davis, all those guys, Connor, um, Alshon was a guy that was always, you know, kind of up and down. You kind of had to keep your thumb on with the body weight and and, and it, it's it, every athlete, in my opinion, needs something different. So if you get a guy that needs to lose fat to improve their endurance, or you need somebody that needs to gain muscle or uh, just, you know, understand how to push themselves. There's, there's a thousand different things that you can look at that would show improvement. That's the hard part about our job is that it's not just sets and reps. It's not just clean squat and bench. It's not just the, the measurables. There's, there's so many other ways to show improvement mm -hmm. and, you know, I think, you know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I think during our career, there are a lot of, a lot of guys showed a lot of improvement in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. you know, and the proof was kind of in the pudding. Yeah. Like you said, the proof was in the pudding. And I wanted to get to that because again, 2011 to 2013, obviously the three straight 11 win seasons, the bowl wins again, we, we could spend hours just breaking down games from those seasons. But the thing that, that stood out to me, because again, I, I think the, the strength coach is almost kind of like an offensive lineman in the sense that when you guys are doing your jobs and the team is well conditioned, like you don't hear about it as much, but when a team's not well conditioned and they're getting beat in the fourth quarter and you're seeing hands on hips, it becomes, it becomes a sore spot. It becomes very obvious, right? Like I said, it's literally why you got a job after that Iowa game. Cause I remember that outback bowl, Iowa just shoved South Carolina around. I mean, there's, there's no other way to put it, but the thing that stands out to me from those teams, again, that you were on and when you took over as head strength coach in 2011 was, I just think, um, you know, those South Carolina teams in the second half and so in the fourth quarter, and I think like 2011 Tennessee in the second half, wearing them down, the Nebraska game, wearing them down in the bowl game, 2012, wearing down Georgia. I mean, early in the entire game through there. I think of uh, 2013 Mizzou outlasting them in, in overtime in, in the second half of that game. And then 2013 Clemson, a game uh, – you say it again? Wasn't it like two or three overtimes? Or yeah, yeah, three over. Yeah, that's right. It was a three overtime game. And then <laughs> I was at the 2013 Clemson game in person. I the the common theme there. What I'm trying to get to the point I'm getting to, coach, is that being a fan during that time, I was never worried in the fourth quarter of a game that that we were going to be tired or worn out or we were going to get pushed around. Like we were going to do the pushing around to the other team. If anything else, we were going to outlast them. I think a 2014 Georgia. That that was another hell of a game that I was at. Um, you know, beating them late in that game. I, I just, to, again, give you that pat on the back, and I just want to get your, your take and feedback on that. Again, you guys, what you were able to do late in games and winning games in the fourth quarter, because games are won in the fourth quarter, bottom line. Um, like you said, the proof's in the pudding. I mean, it stands out. And again, like you said, you had a great group, group of guys, but obviously what you guys were doing, what you were doing, it was working. So I, I don't know. I say that to say kudos to you. And like I said, I mean, I, I'm sure it was a mix, again, of what you were doing and the quality, the character, the dudes you had that were putting in the work and bought into the system. No, I, I appreciate you saying that. And, and it's absolutely something that, that we took pride in as a, as a team, as a program. Um, you know, is it is it all the strength coach? No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. It's it's the it's the culture. Yeah. Uh, and that was top down from Coach Furrier and, and the players. And, and so um, 
all that success, uh, we all celebrated that together. Uh, it wasn't, there wasn't, there's never one person that, that, that takes the blame and there's never one person that, that should take credit for the success, especially right. not in a football team. So.